In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the volumes of prisms and cylinders. Now, volume, in its most basic concept, is a stacking of areas. So if we could take all the areas and put them together as a single mass, what would be the three-dimensional space that they occupy? Now, with that concept in mind, we're going to look at a few theorems here. First is Cavallari's principle which we call Theorem 11.5 in this course of study, and it states, if two space figures have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, then they have the same volume. So if we were to take a square prism and a triangular prism, where the area of the square and the area of the triangle are the same, and the two principles, the prisms are the same height, then Cavallari's principle tells us that the volumes will be equivalent as well. Next, let's look at the volume of a prism. This is theorem 11.6, and it states, the volume of a prism is the product of the area of the base and the height of the prism. And again, height here is defined as the perpendicular distance between the two bases. Last, volume of a cylinder, theorem 11.7, very similar to that for a prism, tells us the volume of a cylinder is the product of the area of the base and the height of the cylinder. Now because every cylinder has the same shape for its base, that being a circle, we can put a more strict formula to this one. And we're told that the volume here is equal to pi r squared, because that's the area of the base, times h. <coughs> so this, the cylinders, we can work out something specific. With the volume of a prism, volume is simply... Uh, base area times the distance between those bases. Let's take a look at how these might apply to some actual three-dimensional figures. We have here a prism. It is a triangular prism and we need to find the volume of this figure. So volume is the base area times the height. So first thing we need to do is find the base area. Because it is a triangular prism, the base is the triangle. So that's one-half the base of the triangle and its height times the overall height or distance between the two triangles. So we're looking at one-half times six times ten times five. Well, half of six is three. Three times ten is thirty. Thirty times five is one hundred and fifty. So we have a volume here of one hundred and fifty cubic meters. If we had a different shaped base, a, a, something other than a triangle, we'd simply find its area and then multiply it by the distance between those. When we get to looking at cylinders, finding the volume can be just as simple. Volume for the cylinder on the left is pi times the radius squared times the height. So we have pi times 3 squared times 8. Multiplication we can carry out from right to left, sorry, from left to right. We get pi times 9 times 8 using our exponents. And then in exact terms, 9 times 8 is 72. So we have 72 pi centimeters cubed. Just as a side note, a cubic centimeter by volume is equivalent to 1 milliliter. So 72 pi cubic centimeters, or cc's, would also be 72 pi milliliters. Now, the cylinder on the right is a little different. It is not a right cylinder. It has a slant. But our volume is di dictated by the radius and the perpendicular height. So whether it's a right cylinder or a slanted or uh, oblique cylinder, we should be able to calculate the same way. So volume here is going to be pi times the radius squared times height, which will be pi times 1 squared times 3. So we get 3 pi cubic meters for our volume of this cylinder. When we start getting into volume and three-dimensional figures, we really start seeing application of multiple shapes coming in. We can find the volume of a prism. We can find the volume of a cylinder. What happens if we have a shape that is a mixture of the two? Let's 
Here is basically a lunchbox, a worker's lunchbox that you might see at a construction site. What would be the volume of this? Well, if you take a look at it, it is actually composed of a rectangular prism for its base and then a half of a cylinder for the top. So as we go through, we find the volume of the base plus the volume of the top. So volume base, volume top. The volume of the base is going to be the base area, which is 10 times 6, times the height, which is also 6. And we're going to add to that the volume of the cylinder. Now it's half of a cylinder, so we have half pi r squared h. In this case, we have 10 times 6 is 60. 60 times 6 is 360 plus half pi, our r value is 3, so we get 9. Our height, the height of the cylinder is the same as this distance here of the base of the rectangular prism, so 10. Ten times a half is five, five times nine is forty-five. So we have three hundred and sixty plus forty-five pi inches cubed. Now this one, since we're looking at a practical application, we do want a little bit more specific of a number. If I were to multiply forty-five times three and fourteen hundredths for pi, I would get three hundred and sixty plus 141 and 3 tenths cubic inches. Adding those together, we get 501 cubic inches. Uh, 501 and 3 tenths cubic inches. Now, a gallon is 231 cubic inches, so this lunch pail would have a capacity of over 2 gallons. So, looking at different shapes, different space figures, we can combine concepts in order to make a single volume and put it, the, all this together. Um, make sure you have these vo volume formulas down and are ready to use them. Uh, after this, we're going to see how we can also find the volume of cones and pyramids, but let's make sure we have prisms and cylinders down first.